Now we're moving across the stage to an area that is several uses. As you can see, there is a straight mic stand, and I don't have a label on this, but this is for this basic area in case of, say, a backup singer that's not playing an instrument, this is a good place to put them. Um, the two microphone stands, an acoustic guitar one and an acoustic guitar two stations are marked with a, with a label, so you want to make sure they get where they're supposed to be. Now, and don't try not to take them off the stage unless you're not using them. Now, we have this here, so someone that is singing backup vocals can also hear themselves out of the second wedge monitor. That's why it's here. Otherwise, there's no cube speaker for this person plugged into vocal number four to be able to hear themselves sing. So there's no cube monitor. So if you're gonna use this fourth vocal, you're gonna to have to have that. And this is vocal number four. They're going across the stage, left to right. Now that's the one use of this. So keep this in proximity. Now, and occasionally if you get an electric guitar player, we have this also set up in the same way. This would be where he would go, or she. It would place the amplifier right here next to the cube monitor, uh, cube monitor, I'm sorry, next to the wedge, and point the guitar amplifier towards the guitar player. Do not put it behind him and blast everybody out in the room. This room is too small for that. This is not a arena with a back line, okay? I like that stuff, it's great, but we can't do that here. So the guitar amp merely becomes the guitarist's monitor and it just sits here, put on a chair, or get a, they make stands for it, so that it's pointing up to the guitar player as a monitor. And then, what we do, there is a microphone here, which please just leave this one connected at all times. It says electric guitar, and so does the cable on it in case it gets disconnected. But this goes into this box here, box number three, which says electric guitar. So it's real hard to mess it up. It says electric guitar right there. And he's right here, so you would take this microphone. If we can find another stand, that's great. Or we hang it down however we can over his speaker. And then we have a channel for the electric guitar player. So that's how electric guitar is dealt with. This is his area or station, his or her. Now, we have the wedge monitor right next to that. The problem right now, Emmanuel only has two wedge monitors, so it can be very difficult to hear everybody, especially as we introduce drums and bass and so forth. Um, there is plans to increase the amount of monitors, but this is what we have right now. When we add two more, it'll be much easier for everybody to hear. So this is box number three. This is the third and last box on the floor here. Again, here we have the aux one with the speaker wire that is going over to the monitor three. And it's plugged in the side, okay? Not monitor three, sorry, into the wedge monitor. So that is also plugged into aux one right here. Now as well with electric guitar and then vocal four, Here's vocal four right here, it's plugged in there. Again, this stuff is marked, it's real easy. And that goes over there, and vocal four is a straight stand that is next to the guitar sta electric guitar station. Also, this other output here for bass guitar. Again, this is real hard to mess up. It says bass on it. All you gotta do is plug it back in to the bass channel, and that runs over to right here to a base DI, and I even have the cable marked here in case you get that separated. Goes into there, make sure that on these, on these DI's like this, make sure it's at zero dB. You had a problem recently where actually somebody had it at 40, which reduced the volume greatly. So make sure it's at zero. Check this switch occasionally, especially if it doesn't seem like you have any volume. And then write another cable that's marked base, plugged into the input. And then it's folded up nicely, waiting for the bass player to plug it into his bass guitar. That's pretty simple. Now he stands here, bass guitar normally goes with drums and with percussion. Now, recently we just added a digital kit here. And if you notice down here, we do have a drum channel. And that's what this is. This cable's going over to the drums. 
through again. It's a little sloppy right now because of where we're located to a drum DI, okay? So that is the drum direct box. And then with that, we have a cable that's on the high instrument input going into the left mono output of the drum, digital drum mixer right here. See that? Left mono, that plug is coming out of there, going into the drum DI, marked high instrument, and then the XLR that goes to the box. So that hooks up the basic drums right now. This, of course, is the drum station. It's caddy cornered, so it doesn't take too much room. The bass player is where I'm standing. This is his place. The reason we're doing this is so that everybody can hear. Right now, the, the digital drum player is gonna have to hear himself coming out of this wedge monitor, so it's not easy. That's normally not the proper way to do it. But this is what's happening. The bass player is also able to hear right here. Okay, and the bass player is not using an amplifier right now. That's really not such a good idea. It's such a small area for it to be in. Electric guitar player and his amp right here, okay? And when you have or don't have another vocalist, you can put him on vocal four or maybe the guitar player sings too. You could put him on this vocal four and he can sing as well right there. And then we have this station, which is for Emmanuel is mainly their acoustic guitar too acoustic guitar one, and then piano. And then of course you can alter these stations to be other things for those of you that are using this room that aren't working with the manual as far as a worship team on a Sunday. Now, we also have one last station, which is perk or percussion. This is the congas. Now, it's important to kind of get this so it doesn't ruin too much of the stage that we don't have any kind of uh, room up here because depth is, is, is a premium. So we try and get an angle with these kungas so that there's basically like two feet from the wall here on the right one and then take it at an angle to the left that comes out a little bit enough so that the person can play and get comfortably around there. Then they usually have their Music stand right in front of them, in between, and there is normally a microphone which is actually missing. It's usually a boom or this. So this is usually in here, and we have to make sure that when we do this, that we be careful that we watch the cube monitor, which is number four, that goes with the percussion area. Now, what happens here, this is the only one that doesn't have the, the number two using for an instrument. But the one will control how loud this microphone is. And so we have to watch where this microphone is for the singer to use here so that it does not actually feed back. So you gotta watch the angle. Sometimes I usually have this kind of going that way so I can keep watching that I don't get feedback. Because the more you turn the microphone this way, the more that's gonna feed back. So keep that in mind when you're setting this back up. Uh, keep it close. We're trying to save stage area as a premium. And if you look down on the floor here over by the percussion station, this is the only system right now that's located in the wall. There are two wall units on both sides. The one on the other side, which is identical to this, is not hooked up at this time. But here we have an extra channel, 16, which is active, and we have vocal number five here. This is her vocal, or whoever's vocal is here. This is vocal number five, which is marked on this cable, okay? Vocal five goes in here, and then vocal five has its own mic splitter, which goes in here, and then splits up to the vocal five station on the cube, so that this person can hear their vocal out of this monitor. And then, of course, the mic cable, which is right here, vocal five. This goes up to the microphone. And so if you want to get rid of all this, you just unplug that. And here's the AC to the cube and the lighting right here. These funny looking things are for the lights. 
and then this goes here. So if you want to disconnect all this, you pull that away, all this goes out together and hooks back up the same way.